Today's story is being narrated by the brilliant channel Forgotten Lives. The Forgotten Lives channel releases weekly stories of people, many of whom had amazing lives or achieved amazing things. I will leave a link to the channel below. So please sit back as Forgotten Lives takes us to late 1920s Mexico. Maria Teresa Landa Rios was born on the 15th of October 1910 in Mexico City. She came from a middle class family and received a good education. She studied in a state school called La Escuela Normal de Maestros and while there she realised that she was highly passionate about teaching. During this part of her life she was described as a beautiful, intelligent young girl who loved to read and study. She was tall, slim, with very white skin and large dark eyes. Her beauty never went unnoticed as she possessed the most sought after features of the time. Moreover, she supported movements that had been gaining momentum in other parts of the world at that time, such as the woman's right to vote. But in Mexico, men considered that a woman's role was to be a loyal, subservient housewife. It was bold, intelligent women such as Maria Teresa that hoped to slowly change this attitude. She wanted to become completely independent, both financially and spiritually. After studying hard, she finally became a fully qualified orthodontist, graduating from La Universidad Nacional. Despite this, her parents, Rafael and Deborah, tried to convince her to become a nun, devoting her life to God. However, Maria Teresa refused, as it was something she didn't even have the slightest interest in. At this stage of her life, she focused solely on herself. She had never had any type of intimate relationship, and even tried to avoid them, as in her opinion, they were quite ridiculous. On the 8th of March, 1928, Teresa's grandmother, Asuncion Tamayo, passed away. The funeral was attended by many friends and family members of the deceased. Among them was the general Moises Vidal Corro. As soon as the 34-year-old revolutionary laid eyes on Maria Teresa, he was instantly blown away by her beauty. There was an instant attraction between them, and despite her opinion on intimate relationships, Maria Teresa and the general soon became a couple. At the time, she was in her late teens, and she would often be seen out in the city with the general. They would go to the fashionable restaurants in Chapultepec and the Plaza de la Constitución. Their relationship quickly grew, and people commented that it seemed like something out of a romance novel. Maria Teresa's parents were strongly against the match, not only due to the considerable age gap, but also due to the general being from a lower social class. For them, he was a vulgar man trying to take away their daughter's innocence and freedom, as well as their control over her. Maria Teresa completely disregarded her parents' opinions on the matter, and after weeks of flattery, she fell for the general. However, Vidal Corro had a big secret that he wouldn't dare tell Maria Teresa or any friends and family. He was already married and had two young daughters. On the 28th of April, 1928, the newspaper Excelsior announced that a beauty pageant with open entry to the general public was to take place in the city and that the winner would be sent to Texas to represent Mexico in an international beauty contest. Maria Teresa's friends asked her to apply, but she wasn't too keen. So, without telling her, they sent in her pictures and entered the event for her. She was then invited to participate in the next round, which consisted of various photo sessions and interviews, which took place in Madero Avenue. This was a very well known and popular avenue in the city's historic center. It was named in honor of one of the most important figures in the Mexican Revolution, Francisco Ignacio Madero. Although she was originally against it, she thought it would be interesting and with nothing better to do, she decided to go along. In one of the shoots, she posed in a bathing costume, 
This caused a grand commotion among the Mexican conservative groups in the late 1920s. An article appeared in the newspaper El Universal stating that Maria Teresa Landarios was a statue-like woman who triumphantly demonstrated her youth and beauty in a bathing costume, as well as her shamelessness and ambition in the Madero Avenue. A week later, the winner was announced in the newspaper, and it was none other than Maria Teresa. She was the first ever Miss Mexico. In the days that followed, her life was characterized by relentless amounts of work and family disputes. Maria Teresa's father, upon seeing the photos of his daughter in the paper, grew so angry that he stopped talking to her. To make matters worse, her boyfriend, General Vidal Corro, was also less than impressed with her actions and was extremely jealous of all the attention that Miss Mexico was getting. Maria Teresa was paraded around Mexico City on a float, and the merchants who worked on the street began to call her the girlfriend of Madero Avenue because it was this street that made her famous. She was described as the queen among queens and as the most beautiful of flowers. She was now famous around the whole country and her time was taken up by doing interviews, attending events such as reunions, cocktail nights and various parties. Many were eager to hear how she would perform in the next stage of the competition. Soon, she would set off to the United States, representing Mexican beauty. Before she left for the States, Vidal Coro insisted that she promise to return to Mexico City and marry him. She happily accepted and made her way to the United States. On the 29th of May, 1928, the competition took place. Unfortunately, Miss Mexico didn't end up victorious, but Maria Teresa put on a good show, which resulted in her receiving countless high-paying job offers. However, she turned each one down, no matter how tempting, as she was set on returning home back into the arms of her beloved general. After more than a month in the United States, she eventually arrived back in Mexico, and on the 22nd of September of the same year, the couple secretly married. They presented fake documents because Maria Teresa was still a minor and paid witnesses in order to give the marriage full legal validity. Maria Teresa's parents were furious when they found out about the marriage, but they eventually calmed down and persuaded the pair to get married through the church. The newlyweds accepted and on the 1st of October the wedding took place. Maria Teresa's father said this regarding the marriage. God help us, Venus and Mars are getting married. With this, he was probably referring to Venus, the Roman goddess of love, being his daughter, and Mars, the god of war, being the general. Despite the reservations of her parents, Maria Teresa was a beautiful young woman, happily in love and caught up in a romantic fairy tale. The couple didn't live in their own house, Instead, Vidal Coro moved in with Maria Teresa and her parents. The general said that the reasons behind moving in to the Landa household was due to the home being located in the historical center, but also because while he was working away, her parents would make sure that their daughter would not be tempted to go out where she would undoubtedly be approached by men. He was a controlling husband who oppressed her freedom. He forbade her from reading certain newspapers and would tell her that a respectable lady has no reason to be interested in the crimes and indecencies that filled the pages. While the general was living in Mexico City with Maria Teresa, his first wife, who lived in the state of Veracruz, was informed of his infidelity and the marriage to a young bride. Both women had the same name and both had devoted themselves to Vidal Corro on an emotional and physical level. For almost a year, the general had successfully managed to keep his secret of having two wives, but in the morning of the 25th of August, 1929, 
This was all about to change. As it was a Sunday, the couple woke up late. Vidal Corro grabbed his cigarettes, pistol, and a book and started to read in the living room, as he usually would. Maria Teresa took a while longer to get out of bed. She put on her blue dressing gown and made her way to the dining room. It was there that she glanced over at the newspaper from that day and saw what she believed to be her face. She took a closer look at the paper's front page. It was indeed her, and what she read after that shocked her. The general's first wife, Maria Teresa Herrerón López, accused her husband of bigamy and Miss Mexico of being an adulteress. The article went into detail about Vidal Coro's first wife from his home state of Veracruz, as well as various accusations and her request for the couple's immediate arrest. Maria Teresa's heart shattered into a million pieces. This sadness quickly turned into anger. She confronted her husband. Blinded by rage, she reached for the pistol and threatened to take her life, shouting, I can't take it anymore. I'll kill myself. The general begged her not to do it, saying, Tere, no, not you. As he tried to get closer and calm her down, she shouted, Don't come any closer or I'll shoot you. Vidal Corro tried to persuade her to put the gun down, but Maria Teresa was out of control. Carried away by her anger, she turned the Smith & Wesson pistol away from her and toward her husband. As he quietly asked her to put the gun down, a loud noise resonated from the house as six continuous gunshots were fired. The general was shot twice in the face and four times in the body. He died instantly. When she realized just what she had done, she decided to take her own life. She pointed the gun at her head and pulled the trigger. However, the pistol now had no bullets left. In her desperation, she turned to her husband's corpse, held him in her arms, and while she wept, she repeated, Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Her mother, Deborah Rios, startled by the loud bang of the gunshots, ran into the living room. She took the pistol away from her daughter and called for help. Shortly after, the police arrived at the scene and were received by Maria Teresa, still in her blood-stained dressing gown. She refused to speak to the police about what had happened. I won't say anything, only before a judge and my lawyer, Jose Maria Lozano. Maria Teresa and her parents were taken to a police station. Despite what she had previously said while at home, when she was being questioned, she stated, I killed him, even though I adored him. From that moment, the only thing I desire is to kill myself, and I should have already accomplished it. The judge, Jesus Zavala, didn't doubt the truth behind her shocking admission and proceeded to set a date for the trial. Ten years earlier, in 1919, during the presidency of Venustiano Carranza, criminal proceedings began to resemble the American justice system with a public audience and a jury of nine people deciding if the accused was guilty or not. The hearing of Maria Teresa in 1929 was the last time a jury was used in Mexico. Following this case, the institution was abolished. On the 15th of December, the trial started. Maria Teresa came dressed in all black. Her gaze was absent and beauty nostalgic. Thousands of people tuned into the radio. The press and ordinary people filled the court and the surrounding streets to see what decision would be made regarding Miss Mexico. It was a hot day in Mexico City. The atmosphere in the tribunal was tense and the remarks made by the prosecutor, Ignacio Bistos, didn't help. He stated, I'm not afraid of women in swimming costumes. The prosecutor called her a killer and tried to portray her as shameless and immoral in front of the jury. 
he showed that was present four pictures of Maria Teresa, in which she was wearing very little clothing. Maria Teresa's lawyer, José Lozano, was then allowed to speak. He was nicknamed the Prince of Speech, due to the way he had with words. Lozano gave an eloquent speech, saying, Mrs. Landa de Vidal, upon committing the crime she is accused of, behaved violently due to a moral force that produced a well-founded fear of an imminent, unstoppable and serious harm to her person. In other words, her actions were in self-defence and because of the dishonour and grief caused by her late husband. It seemed as though all the eyes of the court were constantly focused on Maria Teresa. It was reported that her beauty had a hypnotic effect on everybody inside, as if she seduced them with her presence. She then addressed the court and said, The jury understands how it was surely my destiny that brought about my fit of rage, in which I destroyed the man who I madly loved, my happiness. After hearing these words, the public started cheering, clapping, and many burst out into tears. The verdict was favourable. The jury decided that she was not guilty. Miss Mexico was free, and the country was by her side. Many believed that the general got what he deserved, not only because he was a bigamist who had dishonoured Miss Mexico, but also due to the immoral behaviours of political and military elites at the time. Although she was absolved, there were still doubts surrounding the case. Some believed that Maria Teresa wasn't the real killer. Maria Teresa's brothers, Thomas and Alfonso, claimed that the general hadn't been killed by Teresa. One expert in criminology called Antonio B. Quijano, who was on the case, believed that Teresa couldn't have been the general's killer because she wouldn't have been able to handle the heavy gun. In his opinion, a slender girl like Maria Teresa wasn't capable of not missing a single bullet. He also stated that it wasn't proven if Maria Teresa's brothers were at home at the time of the crime. However, evidence suggests that at least one of them had to be present during the time of the incident. These suspicions were surrounded in uncertainty and commotion. Despite speculation of other potential killers, when Maria Teresa was asked if she regretted killing her husband, she said, Who knows? I preferred to nurture the great love of his memory, already dead, than having hated him alive for having shattered humans' most valuable thing, the heart. Following the famous trial for the assassination of her late husband, Maria Teresa went on to be a history and civics teacher in a Mexico City high school. She never remarried and gave classes until her death on the 4th of March 1992. Among her students were some notable names, including Octavio Paz, Jacobo Zabludovsky, and Luis de la Barreda Solorzano. Luis de la Barreda wrote about a conversation he had with his teacher. He tells that one day they were speaking about notable women in history who have lived especially difficult lives. He asked his teacher how she knew so much. She smiled at him and then turned serious and said, You know, there's some things about me that you nor your classmates could ever imagine. Do you want to hear it? Maria Teresa went from being the beautiful young academic girl to being remembered as the Miss Mexico who killed her husband. Although there are inconsistencies on what really happened that day, Maria Teresa will always be remembered as the killer. Despite there being more to the story that we do not know, Maria Teresa made sure to take that information to her grave. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for listening. And thank you to Forgotten Lives for narrating this video. I have left a link to his amazing channel below. And I hope that you will all be back next week for another brief 
case.